Hello, hello, hello. God bless you all. My name is I'm Unique, and I'm here to share a quick message that God has shared with me about um, remaining spirit-led, being spirit-led, especially in this season, in these last days that we are in. Um, if you are any sort of Bible person, you know the Word of God, you know what is written um in Revelation and even in the Gospels, as far as how we will know that the end is near, um, you can recognize the signs that Jesus is returning soon and we need to be prepared for his return. Um, in the Bible, it talks about, in the Gospels, Jesus talks about how to notice when the last days are coming. And he gives examples of some of them being like, you know, men being lovers of themselves, people's heart will wax cold. Um, there will be wars and rumors of war and all these different things. That's how we know Jesus is returning soon for his bride, a.k.a. the church, a.k.a. the body of Christ. Um, so the Lord spoke to me yesterday about the importance of being spirit led in these times. Um, there's a difference when we make decisions from the spirit basis versus when we make decisions from the flesh. When we make decisions from the flesh, I don't mean just like our physical bodies. Yes, that is a part of our flesh, but the decisions that we make in our uh, in the flesh is when we are deciding, making decisions based off of what we think logically or emotionally we should do. Um, and there there can sometimes be a distinction uh, tough to distinguish um whether or not we're making decisions between the flesh and the spirit which is the which is why it's important for us to be in the word of god the bible says in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, soul and spirit, and the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Um, and so we see here the importance of getting in the word of God in these last days, the importance of hearing what the what the word of what God is saying to us not just in the last days but all the time because the word of god it helps us it helps us to discern um what's what you know where these intentions and motives that are in our soul are coming from and it helps us to make a division or separation between what the spirit is saying versus what our soul is saying Sometimes, some seasons, it, it's like very, a very fine line between what our spirit, what the spirit of God is saying and what our soul is doing, soul is telling us to do. It's important to be in tune with the spirit of God and to always stay in the word because it helps us to divide what our soul is telling us to do and what our spirit is telling us to do. Hallelujah. There are some important decisions, decisions this is prophetic. There are some important decisions that we all, as the body of Christ, talking about the body of Christ, those who are followers, lovers of um, disciples of Jesus Christ, living in the will of God, pursuing the things of God. There are some decisions that God is calling us to make in this season. I think that last year, the last couple of years, it's been like a lot of us just trying to get our lives together, just trying to recover. Some of us, you know, trying to recover from what happened because, you know, not to be, you know, go back too far. But when the pandemic happened, um, it was very traumatic. You know, a lot of what's happening, deaths and people getting sick and jobs, everything adjusting and how we did school, everything was just shifting. And, and so it was a very... Um, almost traumatic time. And so we had to recover from that, I believe, as a, as a race, as the human race. We had to recover from that. And so I feel like this year, it's like, you know, our recovery period is kind of coming to an end and we're, and it's like, get back to the business. I'm not saying that God's business stopped or anything or that, you know, you had to take time off in order to, what you call it, but I'm just saying, like right now, I, the, the end is, is here. It is time for us to get in alignment with what the Spirit is doing. I think that God has been gracious and merciful with us as far as, you know, what has been happening in the world. But at the end of the day, uh, we have to always be about our Father's business. And so to do that, we have to make decisions in this earth. Now, um, a lot of the time we pray, we may think like, 
you know, it's up to God to get stuff done. Like, Father, I pray that you bless me this way, this way, and that. And, and I pray that you give me this, this amount of money. I pray for new friendships. I pray for this to happen in my life and in my family. But a lot of the stuff we pray for, um, God is actually expecting us to make the decisions. He He will give us revelation. He'll give us knowledge. He'll give us wisdom. He'll give us strength. He'll give us counsel. He will give us power. He will empower. He will do whatever he has to do in order for us to do or be able to be the person to carry out what we're asking God to do. There are some things that only God can do, such as saving people or um, just things that are out of our control, right? But God has called us to have dominion. God doesn't want us want us to live in this world where He controls everything, and He's while we just sit back and and just wait on Him to do everything. God expects us to do things. He will never call us or expect us to do something, however, that He has not equipped us to be able to do, or He is not giving us the word or the or the power to be able to accomplish. I'm going somewhere. And once again, the prophetic part is that you and I, we're, the body of Christ, a lot of us are going to have to make decisions in this season. We're going to have to make decisions that are from the spirit of God and not the soul, not our flesh. I hear God saying like, a lot of us have been making fleshly decisions for so long. They may be good. They may be kind of in the will of God, but it's kind of like this lukewarm place that we've been just trying to, like I said, keep your head above water, kind of trying to keep moving. But there comes a point where there's a separation that has to be made. Am I making this decision based off of my soul, based off of my intellect, based off of my emotions? Or am I making this decision because the Spirit of God is calling me to the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit war against one another. The flesh and the spirit war against one another. So a lot of the time when the Holy Spirit is telling us, leading us to do something, um, it is not, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of time when the Holy Spirit is telling us to do something, our flesh, that means our intellect and our emotions are going to go against it. It's going to be contrary. It's going to be like, no, I don't want to do this. Your, your flesh is going to rise up and think of all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. Because our flesh, our, mince, our mind, will, and emotions, um, our soul, it is... It likes comfort. It likes to know. It likes things that it's familiar with. Hallelujah. Ramashako Rabasate. It likes things that it's familiar with. So our flesh is going to, our soul is going, when I say flesh and soul, I'm going to use them interchangeably for the sake of this message. But our flesh wants us to make decisions that it is familiar with doing. You may be faced with somebody is faced with a job making a decision about your career. The Holy Spirit has been telling you to do something for so long, but you have been sticking to jobs and a career path that is comfortable that maybe you went to school for or that maybe most of your peers are doing right now. But God is calling you out, out of that box and into maybe being a business owner or working full time for the kingdom's business. Roma Shekirobo Sata. It's a battle. It's going to be warfare. That's how you know when you're about to make a divine decision or you're about to break a curse, break a generational curse off of your life. Because remember, generational curses come through our bloodline, our bloodline, our DNA, where we inherit from our ancestors. So sometimes a lot of the things we do out of habit and routine or just naturally is is from a generation it's a generational thing some people some generations or some bloodlines struggle with lust so their flesh quite naturally is you know privy to sexual sin so i'm just giving some examples y'all but th th that's how that that bloodline is is cursed i guess that's the curse on that bloodline lusting after after women or men Having sex outside of marriage, that, that is a curse that has entered your the bloodline some way, shape, or form. God knows what history has, what has happened in history, you know. But there comes a time when the Holy Spirit is going to lead you outside of what has been familiar. Whew, 
in your bloodline, what has been familiar in your culture even, what has been familiar in your family, what has been familiar in the state and city and area of the world that you're from. There comes a time when the Holy Spirit is going to ask you to do something that is going to go so against what you are used to or what your soul wants to do. Your soul is going to tell you, you have a degree in this field. You already know you got this skill set. Just do this. This is easy for you to do. And the Spirit may tell you to do something totally opposite. So, <laughs> it's crazy. So, in order for us to be in line with, with what God is doing, in order for us to um, make, make spirit-led decisions, and this doesn't just apply to one season because every season of our life we should be being led by the Holy Spirit. So, I'm not saying just do this one time and be done. I'm saying, like, you know, just, just to admonish somebody. Don't get too comfortable in your flesh. Don't get too comfortable in a routine and a lifestyle that is comforting and, and comfortable for your flesh, that is comfortable for your intellect. I know how to do this. This is how I've always done it. This is how people in my family have always done it. This is how I was raised to do it. This is how my mother or father taught me. If what you have been taught and conditioned to be able to do is out of alignment with the word and will of God concerning your life, you have to be willing, as the Bible says, to take up your cross and lay down your life, deny yourself, and follow him. In order to be spirit-led, you have to deny yourself. That means whatever yourself, a.k.a. how you were raised and shaped by this world, by this culture, by your family, the self that you thought you were, he says you got to be willing to die to that part of to die to that or to, to to lay down that part of you and to make it in and to follow Christ. He said if you're not willing to do that and leave behind even your father, mother, sister, brother, and for the sake of following Christ's way, the way, the truth, and the life, if you're not willing to do that, he says you're not worthy of me. There's another scripture, it's one of my favorite, is in the book of Matthew. It says, He who hates his life shall Find he who loves his life shall lose it, but he who hates his life for my sake or whichever version you read for the kingdom's sake will find it. So that means our life, what we think our life is, there are times when we're faced with either choosing this life that we've been living or we have to decide to step away from that life we've been living and make a Christ-centered, a Christ-conscious decision. Excuse me. <laughs> you may want to be out in the streets dating and being a hot girl or <laughs> I don't know like a hot girl summer or something like that but God may be calling you to be a faithful wife that's going to take you laying down or a husband you may be in the streets you may be the dude that all the women like and you know, you known and you got all these ladies, but God may be calling you to be a faithful husband to one woman and to rate, be, to be the leader of a family. So you have to lay down your life. You have to give up yourself. What makes you comfortable? What makes you feel good? What makes your ego feel good? You have to give that part of you or give that up and make a godly decision. Now, when we do, hallelujah, make a decision that is spirit-led and not led by our flesh or our soul, if you will, there are rewards. Hebrews chapter, excuse me, chapter 12 says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level a path, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be diminished, but rather be healed. So that first part is what I want to focus on. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. However, later on, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace. Righteousness and peace. Righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So 
it takes discipline to walk the path of life. It, fo- it takes discipline to follow Christ. And discipline is something that we do beside, outside of or regardless of what our feelings are telling us, what our mind, what our intellect is telling us. There are times when, like, for instance, just on a natural note, there are times when, like, I, you know, I, we need to work out our emotions. We had a long day at work. We're tired. We're drained emotionally and mentally. And so after work, we decide, or after we're done for the day or when we wake up in the morning, whenever, we're like, I'm tired. I didn't have a long day. I'm tired. You you may have every, your body, your, your mind is going to make up every reason why you shouldn't have to go to the gym. But discipline says, I know what I'm feeling, I know what I'm thinking, but I'm going to do it anyway because I know that there is a reward attached to me being disciplined to do this. The same thing for godliness. There are times when everything within us is going to want to um, go against the will of God. Somebody talks about us or treats us ugly. So everything in us is like, no, she didn't. They hurt my feelings. They talking about me. And so I want to, you want to lash out. You want to talk back, back to the person. You want to be rude to the person. But your that's your flesh talking. That's your soul. Tell, that's your feelings. That's your flesh. But the Holy Spirit is telling you to forgive that person and to pray for them. That's written in the word of God. He says, bless those who curse you and speak all manner of evil against you. Blessed. You're blessed. When people do that. But he says you have to bless them. Bless them. Don't curse them. Bless them. When people talk about you and treat you. Like it's it's a different. Like it's always a separation. It's a difference in decisions that we have to make. Our flesh is going to tell us to do one thing. And our the spirit. The Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Is going to tell us to do another thing. I was wrestling with that this morning. I was on the prayer line, and then the prayer line was taking a while. They were praying for a while. Not like praying in the spirit, but they were, it's like they were giving a word. The church that I go to, we, we have prayer calls, you know, in the morning and evening. And the man who was bringing the word, he was just talking, and it was taking longer than I expected. I'm like, typically, we'd be off the phone by now. But he was giving an important message about um just being prepared for Christ's return. And he was talking and it it sounded like he was just repeating the same thing over and over again. I was just getting aggravated. And it was my flesh rising up. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna turn this phone off and just listen to my music and get on to work. Cause that's typically what I do. But the Holy Spirit was saying, submit. The Bible says to submit to those who have, you know, people who are over you, the people who God has placed in position to be a shepherd over your soul submit, listen, be slow to speak, quick to listen, be humble, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. So I had to make in that, in that moment, I had to make a decision that was spirit led and not led by my flesh. I had to say, okay, I'm finna slide over here and just listen for a moment. I'm not going to hang up the phone just because I don't feel like being corrected or feel like getting instruction or feel like I feel like I know what he's about to say or I already know they've been talking about this. It's a reason, right? It's a reason. There is a reason as to why the man that God sent to preach or teach us, there's a reason to why he was saying those things, right? So I had to say, that's just examples. We are faced with decisions every day or options every day to make decisions that are either led by the flesh or led by the, the spirit. And on another level, there are like life-changing, life-altering decisions that we have to make sometimes that are either going to be led by the flesh or led by the spirit. Some of them are, um, excuse me, like moving to a new city marrying someone, going to a different church, um, going into a business with someone. These are decisions that require a different level of sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Because when we're making these types of decisions, like actual big, grandiose decisions, um, it's going to be a lot of flesh that we're going to have to sort through a lot of flesh versus spirit so that may cause for you to have to excuse me i work at a school so children are here uh so it's going to cause for um 
it causes for you to sometimes go on a fast. Hello. For whose class? For which class? For, class. for science or math? math? Math. Let me see. Let me check. Math. Uh, six. Alyssa. Uh, yes. Page seventy-four. Numbers nine. Nine through twelve. And uh, it's a couple things. Where is this? It's okay. Uh, did you eat lunch? What did they have? They had a table and they had like chicken, like nuggets. Chicken nuggets? Chicken tenders. Okay. And potatoes. Yes, you have this in math. Science, you should be on track with everything. Let me see, double check. Science, you are good. Um, yeah. Okay, yes, this is what you have for math. Those are two sections. You can do those on the same piece of paper. Are you in the pit today? Or no, you are. Okay. Make sure you bring your book with you when you go. So you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, um, yes. When you, uh, excuse me, y'all. This is in the middle, in the thicket of work. So, um, there come seasons when you have to make large, grandiose, life-altering decisions, such as, like I said, getting married, moving to a different city, moving, period, buying a house, for instance, um, going into a business deal, you know, anything like that that's not like your day-to-day, -day, you don't do this every day. Every decision is important, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about a decision that you don't make on a typical day something that you make probably once a year or more or every so often right or once in your lifetime like getting married that's a once in a lifetime thing so these are decisions or, or times when you're or even a career path do i be an entrepreneur or do i stay at this job for however long until the lord releases me these are decisions that we have to make that are going to affect the course of our life on a grander scale and so when we're faced with these type of decisions, which I believe a lot of us are right now, we need to make sure that we are Roma Robo Sotara. We are being in tune, coming into alignment, being in prayer, being in fasting if we need to, which yes, you probably need to, being fast fasting enough to where our flesh is dead enough, our self is dead enough to be able to hear from the spirit. When I say dead, I don't mean like literally dying in a negative way. When we say die to your flesh, it basically means you're quieting down or you're telling your you're quieting your flesh down. You're quieting your own intellect and emotions down. And when your brain and your emotions are quiet enough, you're able to hear the spirit of God more or more clearly, not more, but more clearly, I would say. And so as that happens, when you hear the spirit of God more, you're able to make decisions based off of what the spirit of God is saying um, and not what your intellect and your flesh is saying. Now, there are times when you have to pray and fast for a longer period of time than others in order to get a distinct answer. And there are times when you just have to use wisdom. I was taking a class by Dr. Darius Daniels, um, and he says when we don't get a direct or clear, concise answer from God about something that we're questioning him about, he said you have to use wisdom if the answer isn't. I'm not saying it just... You know, get as clear as you can. Allow the Lord to give you a, as clear of an answer as you can. But um, 
a lot of love to give you as clear of an answer as you can, but if it's like you've been don't don't wait for ten years to make a decision just because you're not getting the exact clear step by step answer. Sometimes you have to literally trust uh, the voice of God inside of you that is telling you to do something or even make a small gesture in that direction. And sometimes making a small gesture in that direction is going to give you an answer that you wouldn't get if you would just stay still. Right. So say, for instance, you're like, do I need to marry this person? You meet somebody, y'all are cool, it seems like it's good, and you're like, mm, is this the one? Okay, you may need to go a little further. We need to go on a date, or we need to hang out outside of churchy stuff. We need to have a conversation so that you can see where that person's heart is. And when you begin to, to see that, the Lord will begin to reveal what you need to know, and it'll help you to make the right decision. No. Thank. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they are so cute, y'all. Y'all just don't know. Okay. So, um, basically, what I'm trying to say is, we have to be in tune with what the spirit is saying. I know I can get into teaching mode, and I can literally break it down to the ground. But basically, just trying to give you some examples and insight as to the fact that you have to make certain decisions that are going to be, you have to come to a point in your walk with Christ that the majority, if not all of the decisions you make are led by the spirit. That is our goal in following Christ and being disciples of Jesus Christ. We want to make decisions like Christ. We want to be thinking like him. We want to be behaving and carrying our ourselves as Christ would. And it's not just about like how you behave in your flesh. Like we every decision we make in our flesh is a result of what is happening in the spirit. So say for instance there is a spirit of anger or something on me that I'm wrestling with or that is generational even um that is on this bloodline. And so every time something happens or when I'm in a situation I get angry. My flesh is reacting to what's happening in the spirit. And so it can work the same way with the word, with, with God, with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. When I'm reacting to something, but I'm full of the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to act and live and behave as Jesus would, because Jesus was always full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus lived according to the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit when he died on the cross. He gave up the ghost, the Bible says. And now the Holy Spirit is living inside of each and every one of us. If you have the Spirit of God, if you are, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so, ultimately, um, you got to do what you got to do so you can hear the voice of God clearly and make the decision God is talk, calling you to make. I'm not saying to rush ahead. I'm not saying to... I'm not saying to delay either, but I'm saying you have to come to a point to where you feel the nudge or the Holy Spirit to calling you in a direction and you're willing to slowly, maybe quickly, sometimes it's like, boom, you need to do this now. Like, for instance, uh, God told me to move, um, leave my hometown and to come to a different city. And so it was like getting very bad. It was getting very intense. And at first I was questioning it, questioning it a lot. I was like, are you sure? Like, is this the right time? Like, I got a job already. What do you mean? And so I kept on living the life that I was living in my previous city. And it's just like, I kept living that life, but I was so unfulfilled. I started getting depressed. I started getting just drained. I didn't have any sense of fulfillment. And I kept revisiting what God was telling me or calling me to do. And eventually it got to where I, I had, like, I couldn't contain it anymore. I had to move. Like, I literally uprooted everything. Now, it was a slow process, like, actually getting the physical part done. But God was speaking to me the whole time. And eventually I got to where I was like, all right, I got to cut out of here. I got to move. Like, <laughs> it was it was quick as it pertains to how fast sometimes a person will move. So, you know, typically when somebody moves to a whole different state, they may have a going away party. They may, you know, have their friends and family. They may cry and, and go through all of that. But I, this was like, uh-uh. This was like, all right, yeah, you move to the city. All right, yeah, sell your stuff, sell this, sell that. Within a matter of a month, I quit my job, um, packed up, and I left. And so 
you know, it's, it, sees, it just depends on the season and the urgency of what God is calling you into as far as like, you know, the timing. But either way, when you feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit telling you to do or to not do something, you need to be sensitive enough. And in order to make to make decisions, once again, that are not led by the flesh, but are led by the spirit, we have to have the spirit of God and we have to continue to sharpen, um, sharpen or build up our spirit man. And we do that by reading the word of God. The word of God like filters out our own thoughts, our own desires, and it helps us to tune into what the spirit of God is saying to do. And this takes work, takes practice, and sometimes uh, and sometimes um, oh my gosh, sorry y'all. Yes, and sometimes we um. I'm sorry, y'all. Sometimes we have to, uh, I lost my train of thought, honestly. Oh, yes. Sometimes it takes work. You know, it's a process, sanctification, getting to a place where you can hear the voice of God better and more clearly and live from the Spirit and be obedient to the Spirit. Sometimes it takes time to discern, is this the voice of God? Is this the voice of the enemy? Is this the voice of people around me? Is this my own voice? Like, it takes time to filter out uh, things and to consecrate, to draw closer to God, to know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And so sometimes we hear stuff off, off the bed and we know that ain't from God. But sometimes it's like, okay, uh, this this is, sounds right. It feels right. Can't really tell. Like I'm in the right ballpark, but I don't know the exact, you know, target. And so to get the target, to get on point, to get into alignment, to get into alignment, to get into alignment, um, it takes, you know, prayer and fasting. Like I need to die to myself. I need to quiet my own thoughts, my own intellect, my own logic enough to where I can make sure that I'm hearing the voice of God clearly so that I can make this decision based off of what the spirit is telling me to do. Some of us are moving into marriages. Some of us are moving into a whole different career field. Um, and it's a process, you know, allow the Lord be submitted to the Holy spirit and the Lord's timing. However, you know, um, so that you can, you know, progress and everything in, in the timing he wants you to. I'm not telling anybody to jump out here and just do something just because you said the Lord told you to, you know, and don't do things that affect other people in a ungodly way and blame it on the Lord told me to. <laughs> like, God is never going to tell you to do something that is going to um, impact somebody else in a negative or harmful way. So don't be like, um, I got to run you over with this car because the Lord told me that you, you know, I don't know, this is crazy stuff, you know, so be, be really use discernment and even pray for discernment in this season. Cause you are, we're going to need it this year, especially with the noisiness of the world and the things happening in the world. We have to be aware and alert and vigilant in these hours. The Bible says the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's a devourer. He does not want to see you thrive. He does not want to see you in your purpose. He does not want to see you in the will of God. And so you have to understand that it's all, it's a fight. It's not going to be easy. He is going to, you know, throw the traps and schemes and things in your path to try to keep you from getting into the word of God, to try to keep you from hearing with the spirit of God, to kind of try to keep you from being around people who are going to hold you accountable to the the things of God, from learning about the things of God. So, you know what I'm saying? Think it not strange when all of a sudden you decide you're going to get serious about your Bible studying, that all of a sudden you start to get hungry at a certain time, or all of a sudden you get sleepy, or all of a sudden this person is calling you. All of a sudden this person is calling you, hallelujah, at a certain time when you say you finna read your Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like the devil, he's sneaky. But you just have to be aware of his schemes. 
you know, and also that speaks to the importance of being around other spirit led people, people who have the Holy Ghost, because when you have those type of people in your life, they're going to pull you toward God. And the opposite is so for others. The Bible says to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So, you know, what I'm saying be mindful of, of what you're doing when you're consecrating in this season. Um, I literally had to wipe out all of my contacts except for maybe 20 people, if 20. Um, I had like a phone full of contacts that some of them I have not used in years or some of them they're just relationships that are not fruitful anymore. They're not conducive to what God is doing in my life or what God is calling me to do in this season. So I had to cut it off. Um, not in a negative, nasty way, but I just had to delete the numbers. I deleted all of my text threads. I just started over fresh because I'm like, I don't want anything to interfere. I don't I want as little interference as possible. You have to even be careful what you who you allow into your story, who what you're telling people. Some people are simply there to be nosy and to monitor what's what's happening in your life. They wanna be know they wanna nose to be nosy. They wanna know like Oh, what you doing right now? What you got planned for this? What you got planned for that? You know, some people just be be around so they can speak on it or put their mouth on it or try to interrupt it. You'll be you'll be surprised, and it's it'd be the people you you think you trust or love. But all together, like just be mindful um, to really consecrate in this season. I'm preaching to the choir. You know, consecration is not easy. It doesn't feel good to our ego or to our flesh. It may require us to be separated from certain things and certain people for certain periods of time. It may require us to not eat for certain periods of time. It may require us to get off social media for certain periods of time. Um, but when you do it, it is such a blessing. You get to, you get so much peace and joy and refresh. Like it's a blessing from on high when you can do that, when you can make that commitment. Um, and so be strategic in this season. And really, I encourage you all to really, really, really um, be in tune as much as possible with what God is doing in your life, what God is calling you to do and make every single effort you can to be obedient to the assignment. You know, if you have to reorder and re, re restructure your life, your schedule, you know, you have to cut some things out of your schedule and say, I can't, I ain't gonna be able to come to this today. I may not be able to do this anymore because I have to study or I have to work on my craft or I have to write this or I have to produce this. I have to create this business plan. You know, I, I'm not gonna be able to, to go. I know we do this every week, but this week I'm gonna be at the house because I got to do this, you know. Set the proper boundaries in place. Do what you have to do in order to fulfill the commission that God has called you to. You know what I'm saying? Yes, people, you know, love people, treat people well, but don't um, allow anyone, even if they mean well. Some people mean well, and, you know, they don't, they're not trying to be evil. They're not evil people, but they're not just, they're just, you're just in a season where you need to really, really, really hear the voice of God. Or you need to really, really just focus and lock in on what God is calling you to do. So you may have to be like, you know, have some tough conversations, you know. And if the person is for you and, you know, a blessing in your life, then they will perfectly understand, like, well, they, you know, they'll understand. They'll, they'll even pray for you and they'll want the best for you. They'll want God to, uh, they'll want you to go in the direction God is calling you to do. You know what I'm saying? So glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, so I pray that you take this message, that it blesses you, that it helps you, encourages you, admonishes you, whatever it was sent to do. Once again, my name is I'm Unique. I thank you so much for taking out the time to listen. Thank you so much for those of you who support uh, the the music and uh, things, the things that I post, the worship music um, and everything like that. The um, glory to God. Hallelujah. The worship music and the any video that I posted, the podcast, the um, the book, uh, I have all these things that the Lord has blessed me to be a part of, and so I'm thankful that you're a part of it as well. If you want to check out any of those things that I just mentioned, the podcast, music, or book, um, you can click the link below, and it'll take you to where you need to get to. Please check those things out. Um, God has so much in store for us, his children, his people, so much for us to inherit and to see while we're in the land of the living. And I'm just so excited, almost to the point to where I'm just like, this can't be real. <laughs> just the things that God will show you even. Um, 
Oh my gosh, y'all. Even the things that God will show you when you're consecrating and praying and devoting yourself, spending your time being disciplined to get in the word and to hear his voice, the visions he will download into you, the ideas, man, you, it's, it's worth it. You need to, <laughs> we need to make sure we're being uh, intentional about doing that. Okay. So I'm sorry if I'm kind of back and forth, but as you can see, I'm at work. So I thank you all once again. My name is I'm Unique. God bless you all. Until next time, take care.